Right, welcome to another SY1 screencast where we're going to continue uh, adding to your conceptual toolkit in sociology by focusing on this concept called social control. Okay, in the last screencast we started to develop our understanding of culture by looking at the various ways in which culture is transmitted uh, within society and we use this concept of socialisation to describe that process. What we're going to do in this screencast is continue uh, developing our understanding of culture by looking at this key question. How does society ensure that people conform to its culture? In other words, how is social order maintained? And we're going to use this concept, social control, uh, to describe this particular process. And both of these key ideas, socialisation and social control, are really important for the first section at the SY1 exam. Okay, the 10 mark question on that section of the exam will always either be a question about socialization or social control. As usual, it's really important to watch these videos as actively as possible, and that means making lots of notes. So the first thing that you must jot down is a definition of this idea called social control. And here's a definition. So social control describes the processes by which society ensures that people conform to its culture and the mechanisms by which it deals with deviance. In other words, social control is about how we're taught to stick to the rules that apply in our particular culture and it describes the pressures placed either directly or indirectly on people to conform to the norms, values and social practices of their society. So social control is essentially about the maintenance of social order in society and about the various ways in which society deals with deviance. Okay, deviant behaviour is behaviour that departs from the dominant norms and values of the culture. And we can identify two forms of social control in society. Firstly, there's what we call formal social control. And this is the official means of dealing with deviant behaviour. So this is about uh, people uh, obeying the law, and this is to do with institutions of the state. However, in addition to that, there are also various mechanisms of informal social control. So this is the more informal, unofficial means of controlling deviant behaviour in society, and this is often focused not so much on the law, but on the unridden rules of social behaviour within a culture. So this is usually focused on uh, maintaining the dominant social norms in society. So formal social control is essentially about the criminal justice system. So the main agencies of formal social control within our society are obviously things like the police, the security services, the court system and the judiciary. In other words, formal social control is about maintaining the rule of law uh, within society. Informal social control, or in other words, the pressure that society puts on people to abide by social norms, is a function that is carried out by all of the different agencies of socialisation that we highlighted in the last screencast. So one really important agency of socialisation in our society that has an unofficial role in the maintenance of social order is of course the mass media. For example, a sociologist called Stanley Cohen famously analysed the media response to bank holiday violence in Clacton um, on an Easter bank holiday weekend in 1964 involving two groups of uh, youths, the mods and the rockers. And although there was some violence uh, between these two groups, Cohen argued that the newspapers exaggerated the events. Uh, the media drew everybody's attention to these particular events and called out for greater punishment for the young people involved in this type of violence. And Cohen used the term moral panic to describe this kind of exaggerated media response to deviant behaviour. 
Now, in the exam, it's not enough to simply describe what social control is. You've got to talk about the various ways in which social control actually works. And we're going to focus very briefly on three mechanisms of social control that you can find in our society. And that's the use of negative sanctions, positive sanctions, and then the one that I find the most interesting, the increasing use of surveillance as a form of social control. The most obvious way in which social control actually works in society is through the use of negative sanctions. And negative sanctions are simply punishments for behaving in unacceptable ways. And the most serious negative sanction uh, available in our society is sending people to prison. And one of the interesting things about that type of negative sanction, sociologically, is how that type of punishment uh, is disproportionately used with certain social groups. So, for example, you are much more likely to go to prison if you come from a working class background uh, than if you come from a more privileged background. Uh, corporate crime, white collar crime, tends to be taken less seriously and is less punished than the types of crimes uh, perpetrated by poorer sections of our society. And then perhaps a more subtle way in which social control works uh, within society and within particular social institutions is through the use of positive sanctions. So this is the opposite of a negative sanction. We're not talking about a punishment. We're talking about various types of rewards for behaving in ways that are deemed to be socially acceptable. So, for example, if we were to look at most schools, most schools uh, alongside punishing students that uh, don't abide by the school rules, they will also find ways of rewarding students for their good behaviour or their good academic performance. OK, we've nearly finished, but the third mechanism of social control that I want to focus on is one that I think is very relevant to lots of things going on in the news at the moment, and that's the idea of surveillance as a form of social control. And the name of a sociologist who wrote heavily on surveillance as a form of social control within contemporary societies was the French social thinker Michel Foucault. And Michel Foucault compared modern society with a prison. And the prison that he was thinking about was this particular type of prison, uh, a prison designed by Jeremy Bentham called the Panopticon. And in this prison design, it's possible for a single guard placed in a central area to easily observe a large number of prisoners who in turn are unable to predict whether they are in fact being watched in any given moment. And this means that within this prison design, social control is maintained because prisoners internalise the idea of surveillance and ultimately monitor their own behaviour just in case they're being watched by the single prison card uh, in this tower. And this principle of surveillance as a form of social control is very evident in modern societies. So, for example, in the UK, uh, we apparently have more CCTV surveillance per capita than any other country in the world. And I mentioned a moment ago that the issue of surveillance and social control is a really important issue in the news at the moment. And if you've not heard of this guy, OK, the American Edward Snowden, can you make sure that before your lesson on social control, you go online and you find out uh, why this person has become such an important figure uh, in recent news events and where we're trying to link the case of Edward Snowden to debates about surveillance and social control uh, within your lesson. So in the last three screencasts we've been looking at material that's absolutely essential for the first section of the SY1 exam and gives you some of the building blocks of uh, sociology as a discipline. So we've looked at this relationship between the individual and society by analysing the concept of culture. And then we've been looking at how culture is transmitted and maintained by processes of socialisation and social control. So if any of this stuff 
uh, is not completely clear, you must go back and watch the screencasts again. It's really important that you have these building blocks in place so that we can move on and begin to apply these ideas.